Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I took this standard RipJaws memory module and turned it into this. A truly spectacular one-of-a-kind memory module that is completely made out of metal and looks absolutely stunning. Now I've been into 3D printing for uh, just about over seven years, which in 3D printing is quite a long time. Back then there were very few 3D printers to choose from and all of them were either multiple thousands of dollars or really crappy. So since I didn't have thousands of dollars, I got a really crappy one and started tinkering, upgrading it. And thanks to this YouTube channel over the years, I got to try out dozens of 3D printers, both in FDM and in resin and uh, it is quite impressive what you can achieve. However, there's still are some limitations with plastic or resin parts and one of the things I've always wanted to try is metal 3D printing. And while there are filaments that have some metal particles integrated into them and uh, you can get kind of a metallic appearance, still it's at best a workaround and you only get some of the properties of the metal but definitely not all of them. Now, the technology itself uh, around metal 3D printing, the melting of uh, metal powder uh, with a laser to turn it into a model, has been around for a long time. Uh, just as long as uh, consumer 3D printers have been along. But the problem is that it is exorbitantly expensive. And while these machines are still not in a price range where I'll have one in my home anytime soon. They have come down considerably in price and instead of costing the price of a house, they now only cost the price of a car. And for businesses, that makes them approachable. So there are quite a few uh, places where you can order metal 3D printed parts, but uh, most of them are still very expensive. So for a small part, you easily pay $100, $200, which makes it something that's great for prototyping for businesses, but not really something uh, that's well suited for the home user. However, more recently, PCBWay have expanded their range of services from just PCBs to also more manufacturing services. And one of these services is 3D printing. And amongst the different printers that they offer is also a selective laser melting machine that they use to print metal. They offer aluminum, tool steel, stainless steel, and titanium. But out of those four, uh, the one that you are closest to being able to afford is definitely aluminum. The others cost easily twice as much or even more. But in aluminum, the prices are actually fairly reasonable. Uh, a fairly uh, simple, uh, not too large part like this one can be had for less than 50 bucks, which is still not cheap, but uh, quite affordable considering what it would cost to get a part like this CNC machined or machined in any other technique uh, inside of metal. So when I found out about uh, this new offering from PCBWay, I of course begged them to send me over a couple of prints and uh, I had this, this PC project that I have coming up, uh, which is the steampunk themed computer, where I wanted some custom memory modules. So I thought that's perfect and I went hopped into Fusion 360 and designed these modules and uh, I went with something that's kind of organic that would be very hard to do in a CNC machine or well, it wouldn't really make sense to uh, machine something like that. So uh, this is what I came up with, some like uh, plated industrial design in the background with these uh, steampunk looking tentacles uh, coming up. It definitely looks very unique and I've not seen any uh, RAM heat spreaders, uh, anything like this. And uh, well, first of all, I started off with uh, just an FDM part to kind of check out how it looks, uh, what the dimensions are, how it works together. I have uh, used similar design to the original heat spreaders where they kind of hinge together and then come apart uh, to kind of lock them together a bit better. And uh, in the plastic, this worked great. Uh, and uh, like I can easily take them, snap them together and they hold together. Uh, however, uh, as you'll see in a second, uh, it didn't quite turn out like that in the metal. And before I show you a close up of how these prints turned out, a bit more about the technology. I've already hinted at it. Uh, the way it works is that you uh, deposit a very thin layer of metal powder and then uh, there's an extremely powerful laser that melts this powder in very selective areas. After that, you just kind of 
put another very thin layer over top and melt uh, everything that you want in your part. After you've done this uh, many, a couple of times, uh, you end up with a part inside of a big block of metal powder. You can brush away the powder and you're left with the part. Now, because of this, uh, you are basically melting uh, particles that are not infinitesimal. That way you cannot uh, achieve perfect parts. Oftentimes when you see metal parts, they have usually been uh, machined or in some way and you're used to very shiny parts. With metal 3D printing, that is not the case at all. They are extremely dull, as you can see in these parts, and that's because the surface is very rough. It's almost like they have been sandblasted uh, quite aggressively. And this is not a big deal, it's just something that you have to keep in mind. Uh, usually in the industry, uh, any metal 3D printed parts that have any critical dimensions will have these models slightly oversized and then they go back and CNC machine uh, those uh, dimensions, like maybe the flanges where it uh, bolts to a different part uh, to have those perfectly into the spec. Now for me, uh, these parts don't have many critical dimensions, but still I did mess up a little bit in the design and didn't quite allow enough uh, clearances, so it does not uh, quite fit. Now most of the dimensions are very accurate, like I measured the thickness and uh, it was supposed to be 1.5 millimeters and it measured 1.51 millimeters, which is uh, perfectly within the range of what I can measure. And uh, the height also was basically uh, dead on, but in the length uh, it was off by a couple tenths of a millimeter, which uh, thanks to me not putting a lot of uh, clearances didn't allow me to quite uh, just off the printer put them onto the modules, but after some sanding and some filing, uh, that was not a big deal at all. Now, I also, of course, didn't just want them in this matte appearance. So I went ahead and spent many hours and many more hours until I could not feel my fingers uh, anymore and uh, until I could feel them again, but in a very painful hurting way. And I uh, polished up uh, two of the modules. I still have to do the other two. And I started off with uh, some 180 grit sandpaper, then moved on to 400 grit sandpaper, and then moved on to this uh, polishing wheel. And uh, I believe it turned out quite stunning. One of the great things of this technology is that uh, the parts where I could not reach with the sandpaper, like the recessed parts, uh, or like these little rings in here, they are still quite rough and uh, they take up all the dirt that is around and uh, get a darker hue to them. This gives a beautiful contrast and uh, gives this part even more depth than it already has, thanks to being three-dimensional. This is also uh, what I kept in mind while 3D modeling. I knew I was going to have to uh, sand and polish them. So the rivets, for example, in the background, uh, instead of having them protrude out like actual rivets would, I had them as little uh, divots. And uh, then after polishing, uh, these uh, rivets are still a bit darker and pop out even more. So if you're making uh, kind of cosmetic parts uh, with this technology, then that is something you, you might want to keep in mind. Like, how are you going to polish it afterwards? Are you going to polish it? You want to have some parts polished, some parts not. And you can achieve some quite interesting effects. Now, since this is a steampunk build, I would have loved to have them made out of, out of either brass or copper, as that would just fit the aesthetic even better. But uh, PCB way sadly does not offer uh, brass and copper 3D printing, which I can understand since those are not really materials that are used structurally a lot and that's where this technology is mostly used. So it wouldn't make economical sense for them to offer this. Maybe there's also some technical reason behind it, but I think it's mo mostly that. But there are some ways that you can uh, treat aluminum to get more closer to the appearance of brass or copper. Now the most elegant way would to be to plate it with either brass or copper. And while this is not impossible, it is quite difficult as there are very dissimilar metals. If this was nickel, for example, instead of aluminum, it would be very easy and I would definitely go ahead and uh, copper plate these modules. But with aluminum, you need a lot of chemicals and stuff uh, that I do not have easy access to. The most simple solution uh, that uses very uh, standard available chemicals is anodizing. And that's very popular in aluminum. You basically create an uh, artificial aluminum oxide uh, layer around, which naturally occurs as well, but very thin. But by making this layer thicker, 
uh, it first of all gives the part more durability on the outside, but you can also deposit some dyes inside of it. Now, they make a special uh, anodizing dyes which work better and av are available in a wide range of colors and you know you're gonna get the exact color, color. but I was not able to find any of them locally and getting them shipped in uh, turned out to be very expensive. In the States I hear a lot of people are using Ritz dye for anodizing, but well, I do not live in the States, so Ritz dye is not a brand that is carried at the local supermarket. I'll I have to look around a bit, maybe I can find a dye that works as well and then I might try anodizing. But that will be for a different video. So if you are interested in how this uh, steampunk build is going to turn out or if I'm going to anodize these in the future, then definitely make sure to get subscribed. Also if you have any questions uh, about this technology, about anything else, leave them down in the co comments. And with that, thanks for watching and until next time.